Hey, Honors Chemistry, it's Wednesday, April 8th. We're going to do Gibbs free energy equation math. So if take a look at 519, please. How much time have we spent on figure 2.3? Quite a bit, right? So that's a worthy table. If we flip it over to 520, sample problem D. It says for the reaction NH4Cl solid, becoming NH3 gas and HCl gas. Well, a solid decomposes into ammonia and hydrogen chloride gas. It's at 298.15. Now subtract, subtract 273 from that, and what do you get? About 25 degrees Celsius, which is called standard condition uh one atmosphere and that's why delta h has a little zero up there is because this thing is done at standard condition and they say on sample problem d it's 176 millijoules per mole and what do they say about the randomness delta s is 0.285 Millijoules per mole Kelvin. Okay. Calculate delta G, tell you tell whether or not it's spontaneous in the forward direction at 298 Kelvin. So I'm going to just take a look at this and I'm going to see that this bad boy right here is positive. And if this bad boy right here is positive. This means it's endothermic, taking in heat, and this means it's becoming more random. So this is what is normally the direction of movement for our natural processes. So that would make it want to drive to the right, but this would not. This would inhibit it driving to the right because exothermic reactions are normal, but not endothermic. So they're going to be fighting with each other. Two positives, if you go back and look at page 519, you'll see the two positives only give you a negative delta G at higher temperatures. Is room temperature higher temperature? Probably not. And so it needs to be a whole lot higher than 298K. So delta H, sorry, delta G is delta H minus T delta S. And all this is, is plug and chug. So let's find out what delta G is. 176 minus the temperature was 298. 0.15, let's just call it 298, times delta S, which is 0.285, and that's positive. And when we multiply temperature, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it, K uh, kilojoules per mole Kelvin, And then this one is kilojoules per mole. And Kelvin and Kelvin cancel, kilojoules per mole minus kilojoules per mole. Very nice. And that's what delta G is. Well, let's see if that second term is big enough to overcome 176. So you got 176 and you're subtracting 298 times 0.285. And I get 91.1, and so do they. And it is a positive 
98.1 kilojoules per mole. So is this going to go ahead and dry? Is it spontaneous? No, it's not spontaneous. How could it become spontaneous? Well, now you're answering it for me, but I can't hear you. It's if you get this thing a whole lot bigger. Let's go ahead and take that from 298. Let's take it up to 500. If you take the temperature up to 500, then this whole negative term here is going to be big enough to overrun that positive term. So delta G will be negative and it'll be spontaneous. Okay, number one, practice number one is the other type of problem here that is interesting. And it says for the vaporization reaction of bromine to liquid. Becoming bromine gas. That's called vaporization, by the way. Uh, delta H is 31. Does that make sense that it would be a positive value? Of course it does, because you need to take in heat in order for something to change its state upward from liquid to gas, make it more random and disordered. So delta H, you got to take in heat. That's positive, endothermic. And then delta S is 93. Okay, so if it's positive 93, does that mean it's becoming more random as it drives to the right? Yeah, so is that a natural process? Yeah, will that contribute to its becoming spontaneous? Yeah, at what temperature is this? Oh, they wanna know the temperature. At what temperature will this process be spontaneous? So this is driving it like it wants to become uh, disordered. And this is uh, preventing that because you got to put heat into the system, which is not natural. And so they want to know what temperature it will become automatic, that the disordered nature of it is going to be so great that it's just going to pull it to the right. Okay, well, let's find out. Um, oh, by the way, I'm looking a little more closely at the problem. Delta S, by the way, these are standard state. Delta S is not 93 kilojoules per mole, it's 93 joules per mole, and of course, Kelvin. So they, that's a gotcha if you don't mind my saying so. So let's change joules into kilojoules by going one, dividing by a thousand, and then putting in the zero there. So that's gonna be 0 0.093 kilojoules. Mole. Now we're ready to plug this equation. Delta G is delta H minus T times delta S Okay, now let me go ahead and plug this in 31. I'm not going to I'm not going to cancel the units because you know they're going to work out minus t times 0 0.093 equals now what are we going to set that equal to we're going to set it equal to zero because if delta g is negative it will drive if it is positive it will not drive and so when this, when these two terms, that term and that term, are equal to one another, then this term minus that term is going to be zero. All I'm trying to find out is when they're exactly equal to one another. So let's go ahead and add this term to both sides, which brings it over here. Instead of t times, I'm going to go 0 0.093 times t. 
that's the way I like to write it. Equals 31. Because you guys know enough algebra by now to know when you add this to both sides, it's like as though you're bringing it over here and changing the sign. Okay, so let's go ahead and divide both sides by 0 0.093. And you're going to get a temperature of 31. Thirty-one divided by point zero nine three. Three hundred thirty-three point three. So the temperature is equal to three hundred and thirty-three point three Kelvin when they are the same value. So it's not going to drive, it's not going to prevent, it's got to be bigger than that in order for delta G to become positive. So for any value that is bigger than or equal to 333K, now what is 333K minus 273? That's 60. 60 Celsius, which would be 150 Fahrenheit. That's a pretty uh, warm environment for this process to undergo in order for that to happen spontaneously. Okay, it's been great. Thank you.